So today I'm starting something new. I'm going to try writing my own custom Wayland composer, the minimal working version, of course, in C language. And no, I don't know any C yet. Hey friends, it's been a while, 33 days to be exact. And I know it's probably a long time in YouTube years, but honestly, I didn't mean to disappear. After posting my last two videos, I got a bit stuck. I wasn't sure what to make next, Nothing felt quite right, and I didn't want to post something just for the sake of it. And on top of that, I got a response from the reviewers on my recent manuscript submission on my first first other paper, and so I had to work on uh, the edits, and I needed to collect a new set of data again, um, visualize it, put it nicely into words, basically uh, rewrite my manuscript, and then submit it again. So we just submitted it on Friday, so now that's, again, off of my plate for the next uh, week or two. Um, but that was just one of the things that prevented me from posting. Uh, as I said, my main problem was that I didn't know what to post. I wanted to do something meaningful, something that would be useful. So I stepped back and started thinking. And then I remembered a comment on one of my older videos, um, actually one of my most successful videos on Wayland, from last summer, where someone said, you should write your own Toy Wayland Compositor on screen. I would watch that. And at that time, my very first thought was, no way, I can't do that. Um, I'm not qualified enough. I don't have enough knowledge, um, nor do I have enough time. But then I still responded that, yeah, I like the idea and I might think about it in the coming summer, when I will have a little bit more time in my hands, when I don't have to teach or take any classes, it's just me, my research project for my PhD stuff, and then that's it. And so during the past months, during the thinking phase, I thought back to this comment, what if I actually tried it? What if I turned it into a series? Learning, building, failing, probably a lot, and sharing it all with you. And so over the past week, specifically, I did a lot of research and planning, and now the result of this is that I have 11 scripts, 11 video scripts ready to film. Um, yeah, that's how excited I am about this series. Because it's not like the first time that I'm trying to learn something difficult and manage and plan out the whole project because it's a skill I needed to learn throughout my master's and now in my PhD. And I needed to develop a skill of learning something that I don't know yet all on my own. And so while this project scares me a little, but I still have a faint hope that I can pull it off. So I'm calling my new tiny toy Wayland Compositor Spin FX. Well, because I study spin systems in physics. So I wanted to try this silly idea of combining system level programming with some physics stuff. So give the basic minimal working example uh, of a Wayland Compositor a fun sciency twist. And so the main idea is just to make the windows um, either repel or attract each other. So basically being able to toggle between two uh, window um, modes, either stacking or tiling mode. And all of that provided by a quick and convenient um, button that looks like a magnetic dipole uh, somewhere on the screen. That just kind of like a fun idea I have right now. Maybe some others will add uh, to it down the, down the road, but um, I hope it's not too silly. So if you are new to this, a compositor is a program that draws your entire desktop. It takes care of placing your windows, handling input, and talking to your graphics card. On Wayland, uh, which is the modern alternative for X11, the composer is the display server. So for example, in GNOME desktop environment, uh, the composer is called Mutter. On KDE, it's Kwin. And now I guess I want to make one of my own, even if it's just for fun. So why would someone do this? Well, I've been working in computational physics for a few years now. I use Julia, I write GPU programs, I model magnetism in nanoscaled systems, but C, it's a new territory for me. For now, C feels like that powerful, scary thing sitting under the hood. Julia is amazing. It gives me the speed I need, the ease of writing my source files, and it helps me to keep my code high level and readable. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's relying on levels and levels of abstractions uh, that 
lead back to C and CUDA. Those layers are there to make things easier, especially if you just need to get the results and move on. But when your problem starts pushing the boundaries, especially when it comes to the memory layout and kernel level debugging, those abstractions start to show their limits. And that's when understanding what's underneath becomes not just helpful, but necessary. And I figured there's no better way how to learn how things really work on a Linux system than to build something close to the metal. And one of those things is a window compositor. And it also just happened to be a thing that I talk about quite a lot on my channel. And you guys seem to like it too. Okay, let's talk timeline. So I'm thinking that it would probably take me about 10 to 12 weeks to get the minimal working version. Something that runs on bare metal, opens a window, moves it, and possibly closes it. But that is given the fact that I have only about five to 10 hours to spend per week. And I would think it's more like five if I'm being realistic, because it also takes time to film the videos and edit and upload them. So learning system level programming feels like a big leap, but it's one that I'm really excited to take. And I'm not starting from zero. I use Julia from my research, as I said, and writing GPU programs introduced me to a few low level ideas, but just not in C land. I've got the foundation, but here's what I don't know yet. So I don't know C, that's first and foremost. I don't know all the details of how VL roots actually works, for example, or tiny VL too. I don't I know nothing about the specifics of how window events talk to a kernel. And honestly, there's probably a bunch of stuff I don't know that I need to know. So we'll start by learning C just enough to survive. I'll share all the details of how I will be setting up my project development environment, all the necessary components, and explain all the little concepts that I learned here and there uh, that will help you to understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. Now, TinyVL and VL roots are not the only way to write a Wayland composter. There is a Rust-based ecosystem too. Projects like Smithy, um, I hope I pronounced it correctly, um, provide a more modern approach. But you do have to make a choice in order to start working on a project. And for me, the C-based VL roots and TinyVL seem like a better way to go about it. It looks like it's more widely adopted, it's well documented, and oddly enough, I feel like learning C is less intimidating than learning Rust. So if you are an experienced developer and watching this and thinking, this person has no idea what she's getting herself into, please drop your thoughts in the comments. What's the realistic scope of this kind of project? Am I underestimating something big? I don't know exactly how things will go. But I've learned something over the years of doing my undergrad, master's, and now PhD, and that with a family, is that if you want to learn something hard and relatively fast, give yourself a project that forces you to figure things out. And my project might not go anywhere, but I'll still learn a ton. And this is what matters. So as I said, I scripted uh, the first 11 episodes. Those will set up the project um, introduce you to all the concepts that are necessary to understand uh, what I'm doing and why I'm doing this. And then we'll move on to the active learning and coding phase, which I'm kind of a little uh, nervous about because I've never coded on screen. But in any case, if you are someone who is interested in Linux, Wayland, and want to watch someone trying something ridiculous, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and say hi in the comments. See you in the next video.